You're reminded that you're not the only one going through a particular right. challenge when there are people around you who can share how they've navigated that situation or at least check in on you and provide words of encouragement and resources. One thing isolation does, it, it, it just warps your reality. You start thinking like, this is just happening to me. I'm not doing it right. I'm a failure. When it's like the natural course of business to have certain challenges. So ch- having that human connection and checking in with people is, is so important. You're listening to the Black to Business Podcast, an educational podcast providing Black entrepreneurs with the tools and resources to start and grow their businesses. We chat with vetted Black entrepreneurs, thought leaders, and business owners as they provide tips and resources to help take your business to the next level. I'm your host, Welcome back to another empowering episode of the Black to Business Podcast. I'm your host, Monique T. Marshall, and today's topic we're tackling, it is one that deeply, so deeply resonates with our community, and that's navigating isolation as an entrepreneur and finding your community. Because as you know, sometimes this journey can be lonely. Isolation can especially be a tough hurdle for Black entrepreneurs because we oftentimes face those additional barriers in the business world. So today we'll discuss the powerful strategies to overcome this challenge ways to build meaningful connections, and how community can fuel both personal and professional growth. And to guide us through this conversation, we have a phenomenal guest, Shade Akande. Shade is the founder of 1X Lead, which is a social network for Black and Afro-Latina executive women and founders. She's also a chief people officer, has worked with Google, and actually launched 1X Lead during the pandemic to combat the isolation experienced by so many Black women in leadership roles. So in this episode, you're going to learn practical steps to overcome isolation and how to connect with others, the importance of self-awareness and daily practices to stay engaged. We're also going to talk about how to leverage technology and professional organizations to find like-minded individuals. And of course, we're going to even touch on the crucial role of safe spaces in fostering a supportive community. So grab your headphones, settle in, and join us as we explore how to move from isolation to community and discover ways to thrive in your entrepreneurial journey. Shade, welcome to the Black to Business Podcast. Such a treat to have you here. I'm so excited about what we're going to talk about today. So welcome to the show. Thank you so much. It is amazing to be here. I am excited as well. And before we dive into the topic, we always like to get our audience familiar with who we're speaking to So if you could kind of share your journey, what is it that you do in your business and how did you get here? Sure. I will share the short version. Uh, (laughs) So let's see. I am first generation and a native New Yorker. I attended the High School of Fashion Industries in Manhattan. And then I graduated from Syracuse University after making a stop at Virginia State University my freshman year. Mm -hmm. Uh, Shortly after graduating, I relocated to Atlanta. And then I had an offer for a full-time job with benefits with a retail company. And I also had an offer for a three-month contract opportunity with no benefits and no guarantees. Mm. So, of course, I went with the contract opportunity because (laughs) it was my entry. (laughs) It was my entry into the world of um, human resources. And I've had a successful HR career with amazing companies. I lived in Atlanta. I mean, I lived in California after Atlanta. Um, before moving back to New York City. And fast forward after a few years of consulting and a few HR executive roles, I launched my current company during the pandemic and during off hours while I was the chief people officer for another company, which is my last corporate job. Because one thing many of us had during the pandemic was extra time at home to create something. (laughs) So I've been leading my company full time exclusively. Um, I'm the founder and CEO of One Next League, which is a social network for black and Afro Latina executive women and founders. I love that. Such a beautiful, amazing story. Thank you for sharing that. (laughs) And yeah, based on your experience, I was like, she is the perfect person to talk about today's topic, which is all about how to navigate isolation as an entrepreneur and really find your community because of course as you know sometimes this journey can be lonely and we hear it all the time in the black to business community so today we want to talk about okay how do we get over there how do we deal with this 
So first, let's just talk about what isolation is and some of those common issues that entrepreneurs have, especially Black entrepreneurs. Yeah, um, isolation is common for entrepreneurs because a lot of times quiet, creative space is what we need to work on our endeavor. And sometimes entrepreneurs have to work um, on their business during the wee hours. So the alone time starts off innocently enough, but prolonged isolation can be unhealthy. Also, resources are needed to afford a team or an office. So in the early days, especially when resources are low, it's, you know, the entrepreneur and their garage. That's all they have. And this is especially true for Black entrepreneurs who often have less access to business capital and other resources. Certainly, all the things. And so, Sade, one of the things I love that you are doing at One X League is you're talking about this very thing, but also you're talking about community. And it really raised my brow when I seen this come across my desk because I'm like, isolation. So what led you to focus on this topic or this area in particular? Yeah, so I found it One X League in part due to the loneliness and isolation experienced by many Black entrepreneurs and executives, myself included, especially during the pandemic. And Mm -hmm. we may not name it specifically as isolation or even realize that we're experiencing it. And when there also aren't other entrepreneurs in the family or your immediate circle to confide in, you may end up carrying the weight of it alone. And that can have mental, emotional, and physical implications. So I was concerned about that for us. Mm -hmm. So glad that you're doing the work that you are doing. And a part of this is, of course, finding community, the other aspect of it. So why do you feel that finding that community is crucial for personal and professional growth as an entrepreneur? Yeah, community is crucial for entrepreneurial growth because it's where you can get feedback. It's where Mm -hmm. you can give and receive encouragement. You can learn about resources you may not be aware of. It helps you prevent mistakes, test out ideas, and you get refreshed. Mm -hmm. Personally, we need human interaction and community because community is the single most important factor for good health and longevity, more so than diet and exercise. Studies show Mm -hmm. that people with strong community support systems, live longer and are happier than those who don't have community. In fact, so much so that isolation has been compared to smoking in terms of its detrimental effect to the body and mortality. Wow. To smoking? Yeah. (laughs) That is is deep. That is so much deeper. And I'm glad that you mentioned that because somebody's listening and they're like, I can do this all on my own. I don't need anybody And you're even touching on some of those challenges, but I want to even dive deeper on that. So what are some of those key challenges that entrepreneurs would face when they're dealing with isolation? Yeah, when you're isolated as an entrepreneur, you have to encourage yourself, even during the difficult times. You have to figure things out alone and problems can be harder to solve and appear bigger than they are um, when you spend all day with them in your head. And entrepreneurs have to do all of this while navigating all of the other adulting and lifing taking place, right? So having access to other entrepreneurs can be a challenge for some because entrepreneurship is a risk. And it's a space that many people don't want to enter, understandably so. And most of the people that are early stage entrepreneurs don't really know other entrepreneurs. And you can't always share what you're going through with someone who isn't an entrepreneur that can sometimes result in bad advice and even discouragement, which is why isolation tends to be the default path. Mm -hmm. Can definitely relate with that. So now I want to shift into really understanding this isolation even a bit more in the need for safe spaces. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the signs that an entrepreneur might be experiencing isolation? It can be anything from not hearing from someone in a while to a series of activity cancellations and opting out of significant events, um, Mm -hmm. you know, no communication at all for extended periods of time. Or when you do see them, they seem disconnected or appear sad when isolation is like becoming extreme. Mm -hmm. And Shade, one of the things you mentioned earlier is that Thing about people not finding or feeling like they have the safe space and who they could talk to. So mm-hmm. I want to talk about why that finding that safe space is essential, especially for Black entrepreneurs. Yeah, it's especially important for Black entrepreneurs because there may be additional areas in their lives where safety is a concern. We Black people, unfortunately, need to be cognizant of our safety sometimes when we 
walk, drive, sleep, work, shop, you know, all the things. It can be quite mm-hmm. a burden. So we don't have the luxury of not being intentional about safety in the spaces we spend the most time. We can't feel unsafe in our neighborhood and at work. And then again, while we're spending hours on our business, uh, it'll be challenging to come up with the best ideas and remain focused with that much disruption to our peace. So having safe spaces with other Black entrepreneurs who may be considering the same safety concerns, or at least they fully understand your concerns, can be validating and provide an environment that you may not have um, in other spaces. Mm-hmm. And what comes up for me in all of this right now is the impact that this can have on one's mental health and even the business performance. So can you talk about how some of those ways that it can impact one's mental health and business performance? Yeah, so long term isolation can be demoralizing and ultimately lead to depression. So if mm-hmm. you have been, if you happen to be having a tough time solving a business problem you're more likely to be harder on yourself if that's all you've been staring at with no insight, input, or support from others. Also, isolation and loneliness cause brain shrinkage and can make us more prone to dementia. So Mm -hmm. the physical implications can be severe. It's important for entrepreneurs to also move physically, uh, to get outside sometimes and connect with other people. One, because that's a direct correlation. Um, There's a direct correlation between physical activity and brain health. Secondly, it provides opportunities to learn what's new. Um, This is especially important for solopreneurs who don't have Mm -hmm. like a co-founder or team members to bounce ideas off of and not being on top of the latest trends and like industry insights and resources and news um, in your professional space can put you a step behind the competition. I mean, imagine if you're in the basement working on the latest rotary phone for years and you haven't been outside. Mm -hmm. Then you go outside, finally, and you see everyone has an iPhone, right? Like, (laughs) waste your time. (laughs) Right. Exactly that. Oh, wow. So, Shada, you are putting everything into perspective because all of this is going down the wrong world. Like, we've heard a liking to smoking, Mm -hmm. also leading to brain shrinkage and dementia. I want no parts of this. (laughs) So let's talk about how those safe spaces contribute, like on the other side of this, Mm -hmm. to the personal and professional growth, like getting this right, finding your space, finding your people. How does this contribute to that personal and professional growth? So safe spaces like community contribute to personal and professional growth by providing a place where you can be your authentic self, Mm -hmm. find your role, gain insight and support and tools for your journey. Personally, you get to exhale and laugh and realize that you're not the only one going through your particular situation. The more isolated someone is, the more likely they'll feel like what's happening to them is unique and others aren't also going through something similar. Mm -hmm. And then professionally, safe spaces are also crucial for growth because it allows you to feel comfortable presenting the real you and it decreases the temptation to code switch. So everyone mm-hmm. benefits from the diversity of your authentic experiences and perspectives as we're trying to serve a very diverse world. Right. Definitely that. So Shade has taken us through what isolation looks like and how to actually understand it. And then also we've talked about the need for safe spaces and we're not going to leave you hanging on the Blacks and Business Podcast. We're going to give you some step by steps. So now let's move into the steps to actually overcome this isolation. Mm-hmm. So, Shade, what would you say are some of the first steps that an entrepreneur can take to actually overcome the feeling of isolation? Acknowledging it um, is a great first step because sometimes right. it's a while for someone to even realize it because isolation can be both uncomfortable and comfortable at the same time, right? Mm -hmm. The pandemic socializing has really changed and many adults are a lot more comfortable being at home or wherever they spend the majority of their time. So after acknowledgement, understanding the benefits of coming out of isolation and making a plan to take comfortable baby steps towards fellowship or being fellowship adjacent is uh, the next best step. And an action can be something as simple as spending a day in a cafe with your laptop instead of working from home. That way you get the sunlight, you get some steps, uh, you see and hear other humans while you're also getting some work done. And then Mm -hmm. um, last 
basically tell people that you want to make an effort to get out and socialize more and network more and ask them to keep you in mind for opportunities to do that. That accountability and having someone to partner with you and actually do it with you can really help. Mm -hmm. turn. I love that. I love the fact that you talked about the baby steps because somebody's like, okay, now I got to go out here and do all of this. I got to change my life in one day. And you're like, nope, these are some of the baby steps. So I love that. Taking a moment for a quick wellness check. How's everyone doing? Are you feeling energized, drained, or maybe a little bit of both? Trust me, I get it. Now let me tell you about my recent tour of the South. At least that's what it felt like. So I spent 10 days between Atlanta and Alabama with family, and then I ended with a conference in Miami. It was crazy. So when I got back to New York, I knew I had to hit the ground running. But this time, I wasn't worried because I had a package of Magic Mind waiting for me. It's a mental performance shot I first tried back in February when their team reached out to us and it has been a game changer. After my tour, I tried the shots daily for a week and the results were amazing. A natural kick to help me get through the day. And as a tea sipping southerner, I've been having it with my morning matcha. And speaking of matcha, Magic Mind uses the highest grade Simonia matcha from Japan. Talk about quality. Even better is that these shots are backed by doctors and medical researchers. Each bottle includes vitamin C and D and so many other benefits. And just for you being a part of the Black to Business family, the Magic Mind team is offering you a limited time deal that you can use now to get you 48% off your first subscription or 20% off one-time purchases with code BLACKTOB at checkout. Visit magicmind.com forward slash black T-O-B and use code black T-O-B 20 at checkout. And so what role does self-awareness play in recognizing and addressing isolation? Because, you know, you got to realize that this is a problem. Mm -hmm. Self-awareness is a gift and a skill. Like without it, many things can easily not go in your favor. So self-awareness is key to recognizing and addressing isolation because those without it often don't see how their actions impact their reality. So it takes right. longer to solve the problems. Uh, self-awareness can also help you know what help to ask for because you need other people to get out of mm-hmm. isolation. Mm-hmm. One of the things I want to talk about is not that big leap. Like we kind of touched on that. And I want to talk about what the daily or weekly practices would look like for somebody to, once you're kind of taking these baby steps to stay connected with their community. Yeah, definitely. So they can calendar reminders to reach out to people just to say hello or share mm-hmm. something. This also prevents um, you from reaching out to people only when you need something. Uh, you can lead the planning and scheduling of activities with your friends and your peers and also discuss and confirm the next time you're going to get together while you're together. So it's like on the calendar, even if it's going to be months out. So you have something else to look forward to. You can uh, engage with LinkedIn posts and other social media updates of friends and peers. So they're encouraged, their initiatives are amplified, and then you're also on their radar. And then Mm -hmm. send encouraging text messages to folks, which is easy to do um, daily, no matter where you are. The little things, just the little things. Yes, Sade. So I'm, I'm originally, well, I live in New York now, and I'm originally from this small Southern town, 4,000 people. And I know a lot of people can relate to being in places where you don't have many people who are like-minded around you, or you don't know where to go to find that community. So one of the things I want to say to that, talk about for that person who might be in that situation is how to use technology to their advantage when they are combating isolation. So how can entrepreneurs use technology in this way? Good old technology. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Old school ways like reaching out to people via phone, email, and text can increase connection and combat isolation. Following thought leaders, entrepreneurs, and just overall Mm -hmm. positive people on IG and LinkedIn um, can educate you and inspire you by what's happening in the world while offering encouragement at just the right times. Uh, Right. Entrepreneurs also um, share their challenges and how they overcame them, which is helpful to entrepreneurs at all stages and can remind us that the things we're experiencing are normal and experienced by others. And then using your device to listen to music, to boost your mute, your mood or mm. take a walk while listening to a podcast that will educate and entertain. Schedule a Zoom meeting with a peer so you see their face. 
use your fitness tracker with reminders to stand up and get some tips, some steps. This can all be um, helpful uses of technology to combat isolation. Mm, those are so, such good things. The things we don't even think about, these are the ways that we're building. Love it. Yeah. And now I want to talk about once you have found you know, some of these ways to deal with this, I want to talk about building and nurturing your community. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the ways that just to give more context, some ways that people can or entrepreneurs can find and connect with like minded individuals? Yeah, there are a couple of ways. So some one off examples are conferences and industry specific yeah. events to connect with like minded individuals who are often passionate about a given field. Um, attending those and striking up a conversation with an attendee or presenter is often welcome because most people are there to make connections. Mm -hmm. Also, local member organized meetups can be effective and the smaller setting may be easier to navigate and less intimidating. But mm -hmm. one of the best approaches is to join specific organizations for professionals because they have recurring events and their updates keep you in the know, then you'll see members repeatedly, which is the best scenario and environment for longer term relationship building and connecting with like minded individuals. Good advice. Good, good tips. And that's a perfect. So I, I recently went to a conference and I met so many amazing speaking of one of the examples that you gave. Mm -hmm. And I met so many amazing people who are doing it's like all the like minded people in one room. I'm like, yay, connect with so many people. But after that, I thought I met all of these these wonderful people. How am I going to maintain all of these connections? Mm -hmm. So, how do you advise one maintain meaningful connections with this community, both either online and offline? Yeah, it's important to first be helpful and giving as much as you like to also have a supportive community and connections and right. make efforts to regularly communicate with your connections so they also feel seen and supported and appreciated. And again, so you're not only reaching out when you want something, but right. show up when you say you will and support their endeavors. Um, basically do the things that you're looking for others um, to do for you and the things that you need. And then, of course, when you are managing these connections, somebody might be thinking, OK, how am I going to I want to connect with all of these people. I want to continue to build my tribe. How am I going to balance this with the demands of running a business? Uh, well, building a community isn't a challenge for me because I just it's like I study it. I do it. I love it. I didn't even realize how much I did it and loved it from like years and years and years. But right. it's like I was always doing. Um, one thing I always did when I joined a new company or organization is locate, identify, and connect with all the Black people. So mm. I would schedule meetings and then lunches. And then eventually we're just friends. And I can remove all the descriptors in my contacts. You know how you have someone, their, their name is like, I know so-and-so from so-and-so right. company. Now it's just like Jen. And that's like the best because you've moved from this like con, you know, contractual or professional relationship and you're actually friends. Right. So the demands of running a business is real. And that's mm -hmm. a reality. That's just par for the course. Um, there are amazing moments and there are moments uh, when I question everything. But, right. you know, balancing... I think people have to really be intentional about the community and, again, understand the benefits, both the, the pluses and the, you know, more physical and mental health impacting ones as well. Mm hmm. So it's solid. And one of the amazing things about the steps that we've talked about is how this also helps with business growth. So mm -hmm. because you're the expert, I just want to know your perspective on, on how can being a part of community contribute to business growth and innovation? Yeah, so community can help you crowdsource ideas to feel innovation versus you going at it alone or being limited to only what you know. Also, right. community members can buy your products and solicit your business services. They can collaborate with you, uh, share contacts and resources. Um, you can get feedback on ideas before going to market. So sort of like a focus group sometimes, sharing mm -hmm. valuable insight. You can hold each other accountable and you can't really underestimate the power of the mental support and encouragement that community provides. And many opportunities are sec secured through relationships, right? So there's jobs that aren't even posted that get shared with a friend. People tell others about the impactful people they know and word of mouth is powerful to secure opportunities for business growth. Certainly. And another part of that is collaboration. So what are some of the, in your experience, some of those collaborative 
opportunities that can arise from being in this supportive community? Yeah, community members can split the cost of goods for products and buy larger quantities at a mm-hmm. lower price when they come together. They can present themselves as a collective of offerings to a potential buyer. So it's like my service plus their service, you know, or right. product to make a sale more appealing. They can find their future co-founder, partner, or investor in a community, um, and they can join forces and combine their businesses to form an even larger enterprise. Mm-hmm. And Shade, one of the things I like that you mentioned is it's kind of like they can help you or bouncing those ideas off. But mm-hmm. also a part of this is dealing with those challenges so that the benefits of having a community help you navigate those business challenges. What would you say those are? Yeah, like you're reminded that you're not the only one going through right. a particular challenge when there are people around you who can share how they've navigated that situation or at least check in on you and provide words of encouragement and resources. One thing isolation does, it it, it just warps your reality. You start thinking like, this is just happening to me. I'm not doing it right. I'm a failure. When it's like the natural course of business to have certain challenges. So ch- having that human connection and checking in with people is just so important. Mm-hmm. Certainly agree. And speaking of checking in, a big thing I've been hearing a lot about, I actually just helped one of my friends get a recommendation to get a mentor. So mm-hmm. I want to talk about the role of mentorship and peer support playing in entrepreneurial success, but then also dealing with isolation. Yeah. So entrepreneurs that are in the early stages of their business can learn a lot from more seasoned entrepreneurs. So they avoid some of the pitfalls and so they get insight that they may not be aware of otherwise, which can help catapult their business. Mm -hmm. And peer support can also offer similar benefits in addition to offering advice when facing um, similar challenges and having someone to vent to and celebrate with that knows exactly what you've been experiencing is magical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, Shade, we have covered so much, and this has been like here, here, there, all of the things um, that one needs. I'm, I know I'm over here like, note, note, notes. Uh, so, somebody is listening and they're like, okay, I need Shade. So, let's talk about the work that you are doing. Um, and can you just share a little bit more about what 1X League and the unique experience that it offers for Black executives and founders and also those who are dealing with this situation and they might need the extra support. Yeah, so 1X League is a social league for Black and Afro-Latina women executives and founders who are often Mm -hmm. the only ones at their level in the spaces that they occupy as Black leaders. And members have a lot in common in terms of their experiences navigating this world, North America and Europe specifically, as Black Mm -hmm. women. And One X League is the psychologically safe space for members to come together in person and virtually to engage in a variety of experiences around entrepreneurship, arts and entertainment, wellness, wealth, philanthropy, leadership, and luxury travel, which are our seven verticals. Mm -hmm. Love that. And so in your experience, how have you seen 1X League like really transform and help those in the community with that isolation and strong community building? Yeah, so we provide five to six experiences each month for members to come together in person and virtually. And each experience is centered around um, our seven verticals or one of our seven verticals. In addition, we have our private member suite, which is a platform where members connect with each other and learn about 1X League offerings, events and resources. We also connect with members weekly through our weekly note newsletter And we send out a variety of what we call surprise and delights to members, Mm -hmm. which is a variety of culturally relevant gifts and celebratory items and recognitions and things like just because. So we have Mm -hmm. many points. So members are not going at it alone, whether they're a founder or an executive. They're always hearing from us. There's always something for them to do. There's always members for them to connect to and um, different channels for them to do that. So that's how we're really going um, about combating isolation for our members. And somebody's listening and they're like, okay, sign me up. So what does their onboarding process look like for someone who is interested in working with 1X League? Is it they go to the website? How does that work? 
Yes. So um, listeners that are founders or executives, VP plus and are black or Afro Latina women can visit one X leagues website for more information and to join our waiting list. And we have different intake periods that we review the waiting list. One is actually coming up at the end of May. I think it's May 30th to June 4th. Um, Mm -hmm. And our website is one X league.com. Perfect. We're certainly going to put those in the show notes so people can sign up. So we've talked all about how to navigate isolation as an entrepreneur and find your community. And one of the things that you mentioned in the beginning is this is something that you struggle with. And I want to talk about how did you go about finding your community and also how did you deal with that isolation personally and when it clicked for you? Uh, Yeah, so I would say I'm like I mentioned, I'm always looking for community and people I have things in common with. And I work um, remotely a lot. So I have to be cognizant of when I haven't been around humans enough. Um, right. So I'll make sure I ping someone or, you know, look at my calendar and, and get something going. So I make sure that I'm continuously a part of a community. And I would say that I'm a huge believer in community and the importance that it plays in our lives. And my two favorite communities are, of course, One X League, um, in short, because the women are amazing. They're mm-hmm. kind, intelligent, funny, like interesting. And our member experiences is where I really get filled. Another right. personal community of mine is a group of seven women that I've known since I was about nine years old. And it's been decades of just greatness. We're all first generation, a collection of doctors, entrepreneurs, pharmacists, professor, healthcare professionals. And we have been at all of each other's major life events. And when we get together, it's like no time has even passed, even though we're spread out across the country and decades Mm -hmm. have actually passed. So the laps don't end and it's the absolute best. And for both communities, we create psychologically safe spaces We're our authentic selves. We hold each other accountable. We support each other. Mm -hmm. And we share similar life experiences as successful Black women in the Western world. And I also have a personal, um, what I call board of directors, which includes a mix of friends, entrepreneurs, and just really dope people that pour into And I pour into them. I love that. We just had someone on the... See, that's so key. We're all in tune on the Black Business Podcast. We also <laughs> had someone talk about the personal board of directors. I love that. Shade, you have built an amazing community and you are doing amazing things. For you, in this journey, what has been the best risk that you've taken? Hmm. Good question. So I am one of those people who believe in taking risks. I believe that it's better to take a risk and quote unquote, and not go the way you want to than to live with regret. So I would say when I moved to Atlanta shortly, a couple of years after graduation, I just wanted to be somewhere different after growing up in New York. So I had a list of places um, I wanted to visit that I'd never been. And Atlanta was the first place I went to. And I tell you not, I was in the airport and a woman an older woman said good morning to me and I just turned all the way around. She's like, no, I'm talking to you. And I was like, oh, people say good morning here. That's what's happening. <laughs> like I fell in love with Atlanta and then, you know, just the weather, the cost of living, yeah. you know, people. And I literally relocated in two weeks. Just Oh, wow. And I'm like, I'll figure it out. And then I mentioned when I had an opportunity to accept a full time job with benefits and, you know, such. And I went ahead with the, the three month contract job, which actually ended mm-hmm. up expanding because I was doing really good work. And then um, I loved Atlanta. But, you know, after a while, I was just sort of bored with it. And I was like, oh, let's try California. I'd never, you know, spend a lot of time there. So I moved out to California, got a job with Google, had some great opportunities out there. And um, my niece and nephews were growing taller than me. And every time I would go home and visit, I just felt like I was missing things. So I moved back to New York and I visited countries for the first time, like in groups and by myself. Like, I'll just do research and figure it out. Like, I'll, I'll go anywhere, do anything. I'll do the research needed to make it an intelligent decision. But mm-hmm. I fear regret much more than I don't even believe in failure because you learn in everything. In fact, you learn more. Right when you quote unquote fail, then when you succeed, when you succeed, you're popping bottles and then you go to bed, right? But when (laughs) you fail, you dissect everything you did and you're truly learning. Mm. So every experience is, is worth an experience. That is so true. And I, you have had some great risks that have paid off truly. So all the great experiences and 
they got you with that southern hospitality that's what in, in, in atlanta yeah <laughs> although i will say because so i'm from georgia mm-hmm. although i will say yesterday i was walking down the street in um brooklyn Mm-hmm. And I was walking past this older lady with her car, and I was just in my own zone, just zoned out. But I'm just walking past. She stopped when I got a little bit past her. She's like, good morning. How are you doing? And have a nice day. I did like you, like a whole circle. Like, are you in New York? <laughs> I know. It's it's beautiful. And it's funny because now I do that all the time when I yeah. um, especially when I encounter yeah. Black people where there aren't a lot of them. Mm-hmm saying hi and waving and you know I always try to give better customer service than I re- receive I just believe that right. kindness is so important even when it's not reciprocated you know that's true that is true yeah reminding us I I, I was like you know better Monique <laughs> <But>. <laughs> yes and so for somebody who's listening who's maybe in their first year of business what advice would you give them first year of business I would say do your research and listen to the right people. And the the right people are sometimes hard to identify. Um, Sometimes your parents who love you may not be the right people to give advice on certain things. So Mm -hmm. find the people who have found success, whether they are miles and billions of dollars away. You can read their story, follow their their Instagram or LinkedIn accounts, read their books, and, and train yourself that way. All again about community, like have that community that can support you and get you the insight and support and knowledge that you need to be successful. Yes, the right people in all caps. In yes. All caps. So speaking of the right people, uh, Shade, any tools or resources that have helped you in your entrepreneurial journey that you just love? Um, honestly, I would say my favorite resource throughout my journey is really the community and relationships I built over the years. And it may sound mm-hmm. cliche, but it, that's how I grow and where I learn about the Good. new tools and platforms and resources. I always learn something new when I connect with or spend time with folks. Um, that just happens because I'm also really intentional about the communities I build. Mm-hmm. So that's where I learn. That's where I connect. Like my, And I believe I can learn from anyone. Like my nephews and nieces keep me current. My professional connections continue to connect me with others. And I do the same for them. Like people will always be my favorite and my go-to. Oh, I love that. People will always be my favorite. I got to write that for sure. <laughs> And my final question is, what does it mean to you to be Black in business? To be Black in business. It is such a superpower. Um, I recently watched uh, Black Twitter on Hulu. That's that Mm -hmm. multi-episode documentary. And it was a great reminder of the impact that Black people have on culture, on creativity, on building. If you think about the last couple of decades, even just think about slang and colloquialisms and and all of the things that are creative, a lot of times they came from black people, right? Mm -hmm. Like so, so creative. And that's why it always blows my mind when I think about spaces that don't value diversity. It's like you are just throwing money out the window because when we come to the table, share our perspective, add our sauce to the thing, like, oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would say that it is just, magical, unique, and like none other. That is beautiful. I totally agree. Totally agree. Well, Shade, this has been phenomenal. I've learned so much. I know those who are listening, uh, you've definitely helped them as well. I want to end it off by asking, where can people find you, connect with you, and continue to support you? Yes. So uh, people can connect with me via LinkedIn at Shade Akande. Uh, Last name is A-K-A-N-D-E. And they can follow us on IG at 1X League. Perfect. And we will definitely put those in the show notes. Shade, thank you again so much for being on the Black to Business podcast and doing the work that you do. Thank you again for pouring into our audience. Thank you. This has been such a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for tuning into this enlightening episode. And we're just so grateful to have you a part of the Black to Business family. So today we had the privilege to speak with Shade Akande, who shared her remarkable journey of founding 1X League, driven by her own personal experiences of loneliness and isolation as an entrepreneur. Her insights about the profound impact of community and mentorship were truly eye-opening. So remember, isolation has been compared to smoking in terms of its detrimental effects on the body and mortality. We want no parts of that. 
but also it's a stark reminder of the importance of staying connected and finding your tribe. To dive deeper into the resources mentioned in today's episode and to learn more about our incredible guest, please visit blacktobusiness.com forward slash 202. And before we go, a quick reminder, this episode is proudly sponsored by Magic Mind, your go-to solution for enhanced focus and productivity. As a special treat for our valued listeners, you, Magic Mind is offering up to 48% off your first subscription or 20% off one-time purchases using code BLACKTOB20 at checkout. Visit magicmind.com forward slash BLACKTOB to claim your discount now. Don't forget to tune in next week for another inspiring episode. Until then, keep building and keep pushing the culture forward.